Civilization VI is broken. Okay, well, not exactly, but I guess I really couldn't grab your attention with... Civ VI has some issues, but for the most part, it's a great game. But these small things need to be fixed. Now, could I? I guess a more accurate title could be... Xbox users literally can't play the game, and for the rest of us, there are things that need to be fixed. That's definitely a good YouTube title, right? Civilization VI has been out for about six years now, and over the course of its lifetime, it has been riddled with, just like any other game out there, bugs. From the smallest, silliest bugs that aren't super important, don't really change the game, to the most ridiculous exploits that completely break the game, Civ is really no stranger to them. Now, while the majority of these bugs have been fixed with previous patches or updates to the game in the form of DLC, there are still some out there in the game now that affect a pretty large player base of the game here in 2022. The final patch of Civilization VI came out over a year ago, and while we had hoped that they would be fixed during this patch, they were not. With no real update for the community, it seems like they have kind of left Civ VI in the past and are, at least I'm hoping, putting all of their resources into the next iteration of the Civilization franchise. Now in this video, I'm going to outline a few game-breaking bugs that you can avoid, uh, some small things that should be changed but still haven't, as well as a kind of newish issue for console players that really seriously needs to be addressed. Now if you can find the timestamps right here if you want to skip around and find a section that maybe pertains to you that needs to be talked about. Uh, but before we go any further, I want to have to say this, please do not spam the devs. If you have an issue, if you want to report a bug, the best way to do this is to flood the support line with tickets, which can be found here at the 2K support website, which is also linked below in the description. I am lucky to have a good relationship with Firaxis. I have been paid to play their games before. I am overwhelmingly positive about the Civ franchise, but I still think that there needs to be some criticism applied here. And if there's any way that we want to be able to fix these issues, I have been told multiple times by devs who I have a relationship with that the best way to actually get them done is to submit tickets on the 2K support website. So please, if you have any issues, if you have any of these issues and you want to see them fixed, submit a ticket in the description below. Now with all of these serious issues in Civ 6 that are still around, there are honestly quite a few small ones that slipped under the cracks of QA and weren't noticed until the community pointed them out. Now with these, they're not exactly game-breaking, they aren't technically bugs, but just minor annoyances and text updates that could be fixed in about 5 minutes or less. They are still here in 2022, and a Reddit post is generally made once a month because of them. So here are a couple examples. Now while these two Eurekas aren't incredibly important, and well, unless you're playing Babylon, Siege Tactics and Replaceable Part Eurekas are absolutely incorrect according to the descriptions. Siege Tactics requires two trebuchets, not bombards, in order to boost it. And Replaceable Parts requires three Line Infantry, not Musketmen. Line Infantry and trebuchets were introduced during the New Frontier Pass, and while they updated the boosts, the resulting texts were not updated. Now one that is a little bit more serious is actually a Civ Leader ability. This ability is Jadviga's Lithuanian Union. Now this bonus states that Holy Sites receive a major adjacency bonus, but in actuality, they only receive a standard adjacency bonus. In Civilization VI, there are three adjacency bonuses, Major giving you plus two, Standard giving you plus one, and Minder at plus 0.5. Now, I'm not 100% positive if this was just never a bonus before, or if it used to be, but when they changed the Culture Bomb in the final patch, it ended up reverting, or maybe it was just a mistake in the text, but it's pretty important to note, and if you're playing Poland and wondering why you're not getting it, this is why. Two more examples of text updates are actually promotions with ranged and cavalry units. If you have a ranged unit, such as an archer for example, there is literally no reason to ever take the incendiaries promotion instead of aerostorm. Now, aerostorm gives you plus 7 strength versus land and naval units, whereas incendiaries is supposed to give you plus 7 versus district defenses. However, if you take aerostorm, you still get the plus 7 on district and district defensive either way. I don't know how this one got through, uh, because taking incendiaries is literally just a waste of promotion at this point. <laughs> the same goes with Marauding on Heavy Cavalry. Uh, marauding states that you get plus 7 combat strength versus units in districts, but it doesn't matter if a unit is in a district or not, or a city or not, Marauding still gives you plus 7 damage to that city or district regardless. I think if this one was just changed to plus 7 damage to districts or cities, it would make more sense, instead of deciding whether or not a unit needs to be inside it, but... It says that, and it doesn't matter. 
I, I think there's just sometimes a little bit of uh, miscommunication between what the skill actually does and the text. I'm sure there's more of them, but these are the two that I know of right now. On top of these, I do know that there are quite a few localization text issues that are incorrect as well. Uh, these are the ones that I was made aware of by my community, albeit I have been told that there are a bunch more. The two that I know of for sure are the French and Polish localizations. Now, if you're playing with the French localization, it states that Portugal's ability gives an extra first meet envoy instead of open borders. That, that is incorrect. You don't get the envoy, you just get the open borders. If you're playing with the Polish localization, whenever you take the Pantheon City Patron Goddess, it states that it gives 25% production to wonders in districtless cities instead of districts, whereas you just it's supposed to be plus 25% production towards districts. So those are two incorrect ones. If there are more, please let me know in the comments below. Um, I can read and understand French, so I know that one was you know incorrect. The Polish one was just uh, off of a Google Translate, but considering what the Google Translate says here, uh, it seems like uh, it's a no-brainer. Now, moving on to actual bugs, there are still quite a few of them in the game that are causing issues, and like I said, the majority of them have been hammered out in patches throughout the years. But despite that, a couple have slipped through the cracks, and I was hoping that they would have been fixed in the final patch of 2021. I just don't know why they weren't. Uh, a few of these aren't awful. Um, they're just kind of annoyances. But there are a couple that absolutely softlock the game and make it unplayable. Now, me, myself, I haven't experienced this bug personally. I have seen other people experience it while streaming, but I haven't had it happen to me. But it is the Vietnam and Portugal music bug. Now, when Vietnam and Portugal were introduced in the New Frontier Pass, there, for some reason or another, there is a bug where their music will continue to play throughout the game, even if you go to the main menu. The only way of fixing this is actually to completely exit the game and restart it. Uh, but this isn't like a completely game-breaking bug. It's just certainly an annoying one. One bug that didn't show up until the Frontier Pass, as far as I'm aware, is the city-state vision bug. There are instances where you will not receive the vision of a city-state, even if you are suzerain of them. I'm not 100% on the reason why this happens. I've seen posts stating that it has to be when you used to be at war with the city-state, but then you suze them. Uh, in my tests, I've never been able to actually replicate the reason why this is happening. Uh, but I've had it happen more, basically every single game it happens at least once. So if you do know the reasons or are able to replicate it, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know the reasoning. Another bug here is the Hall of Fame bug on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this doesn't actually break the game. You can still play it fine. But for some reason, who knows why, the Hall of Fame on the Nintendo Switch sometimes does not record your wins. There are constant threads on Reddit and Civ Fanatic forums of this happening to where even a few months ago I saw a post where someone made an Excel spreadsheet to track their Hall of Fame since the Switch version was so unreliable. This honestly probably won't ever get fixed. Uh, hopefully it will, but I mean, who knows? It's it's a console issue. So if you're having trouble getting them tracked in the Hall of Fame, I would honestly maybe, and it's super important to you, just throw it in a spreadsheet <laughs> because I, I, I really truly don't know if this one will get fixed. This last one here before we get into actual game breaking bugs is an exploit that still exists in the game. This is the strategic resource exploit and it's in its name. You can trade the AI and kind of break them early game by trading strategic resources. In order to set this up, you will need 40 of a strategic resource, the most reliable in the early game being horses, and then you trade and sell the AI these horses over and over again. The AI will overvalue the horses when they want to buy them and then undervalue them when they have the quote unquote full amount of resources in being 40 when you sell them when they sell them back to you. You can do this over and over again until the trade sell value is equal and you can sometimes double and triple your gold per turn economy. As this states, this isn't necessarily game breaking, as you can just kind of not do this and ignore it, but if you engage in it, it will make the AI fall incredibly far behind in the early game and give you such an advantage there's kind of really no point in playing since you can do it for every AI willing to trade it. I have done this in some of my kind of speed run playthroughs where I try to play the game as fast as possible. And there's been instances where I've gone from about 15 gold per turn to 70 to 80 gold per turn around turn 30 because the AI just super overvalues horses. Like I said, you can just kind of ignore this and just not do it and it doesn't really do anything. But it's an ex exploit in the game that still exists. Uh, surprised that it wasn't taken out. It's been actually around since, I don't know, since the beginning of the game, maybe even the beginning of since the 
Gathering Storm Pass, maybe before it, because I've seen Civ Fanatic forum posts on it. Just like the Mahavihara exploit, you can just not do it and live with it, which is why it's not necessarily a game-breaking bug. And now we move on to actual game-breaking bugs that still, for some reason in 2022, exist. The levied city-state bug is one that I actually just figured out recently, and it's been something that's been plaguing me for a very long time. If you have levied a city-state, sometimes units will completely disappear and disband if you're not careful with them. Now with this bug, if you have levied a city-state, and you leave levied units in your territory until they have one turn left, they completely disappear instead of getting kicked out of your borders. Now, I've actually refrained from playing silly Matias Hamiko levy only games because of this reason for a while now. Uh, but after playing a levy only game on stream this last week, and it happening to me during the stream, I had to figure out why this is going on. Now, the normal order of operations is that there's one turn left on the city-state units. The next turn happens, they go back to being coming city-state units, and they go back to the city-state. But instead, they just completely disband. Now, what we figured out is that if the city-state units are inside your borders when this happens, that's when the disband happens. If the city-state units are inside enemy territory, or if they're in neutral territory, they will kick back to the city-state and start moving along like nothing happens. The theory that we came up with on stream is that there's some sort of order of operations check flag that happens that is messed up, that when turning the city-state units back to non-levy, it's maybe checking for like impassable terrain and for some reason or another, the game thinks that your borders are impassable, even though you're suzerained, and just completely disbands them. This is just a guess. I don't know the actual reason. But if you've been wondering why levied units just completely disappear after being levied, this is why. There is a workaround. It's stupid, but you just have to make sure that the levied units that have one turn left aren't inside your, ci your city borders. And leave them outside. They'll kick back and you can just re-levy them again. Now, another issue that happens is that you're unable to build an industry on volcanic soil for certain types of resources. I haven't encountered this, but there was a post on the r slash civ subreddit recently. And there are a few types of resources that you can't build an industry on when you're playing with monopolies and corporations, and a volcano has exploded and made the base tile volcanic soil. I know one for sure is Honey, uh, and I believe Jade is as well, but according to JNR, who is the modder that created the Urban Complexity mod, they stated in the post, Quote, I think I figured it out. Industries and corporations for Jade slash Honey have the must remove feature activated. Since you can't remove volcanic soil, you get what happened here. The setting is the same for the base improvement, but since mines can be built on volcanic soil anyway, there's no conflict with those. So, if you have a tile like here that spawns a resource next to a volcano, you have an improvement, the volcano explodes, makes the base tile volcanic soil, you repair it, and then you want to make an industry there, you will not be able to. This is especially unfortunate if the only reason you can create the industry is because you have one copy of the resource and you're getting another one from a city-state. There is literally no workaround for this, and you just won't be able to make an industry, unfortunately. Now, this is the worst bug out of all of them in the entire, basically, all of Civilization VI. I have no idea how this one out of all of them, literally didn't get hotfixed in a mini patch because it literally soft locks the game for you. This is the Culture Industries policy card bug. In one of the newest game modes, Dramatic Ages, you are able to use special policy cards that are given to you. One of them, the Culture Industry Golden Age policy card, will break the game if you insert the card and do at least one of three things. Transition to a new era, change governments, or just removing the card itself. If you happen to do one of these things, you get a bug that, according to Civ Fanatics, gives you a 100% production penalty, causing all of your unbuilt slash currently building districts to take 999 plus turns, and you will never be able to finish a district for the rest of the game. This one is so egregious that there was a mod specifically made to fix this one singular issue. I'm sure some of you watching this video have had to restart entire games because you didn't have auto saves turned on, and then you couldn't go back to a previous save because this game, this policy card soft locked the game for you. So please, if you play with Dramatic Ages, never, ever, ever run this card unless you're playing with the mod that is talked about before. Now, there are a bunch of smaller bugs that I didn't mention in this video, and it would honestly take hours for me to go through all of them, so I really only highlighted the most important ones that I've found or have been told about. But right now, as of July 2022, 
the bugs really aren't even the biggest issue. You can create workarounds for them, or you can just not do the things and still play the game regularly. The biggest issue with Civilization VI right now are the crashes and desyncs, the crashes for console players, and the desyncs for multiplayer, whether you're playing on PC or console. I was asked by someone on Reddit to do what I could in my power to bring light to this, so I created a poll a while back and asked my Discord to see if they get these crash issues, specifically the Xbox crash issues. Now I know Potato McWhiskey did as well, and while he has a much larger community than I have, the consensus was still the same. If you play Civ 6 on Xbox, the game is practically unplayable right now because of the amount of crashes that happen. I have been getting comments in my stream saying that they don't even play Civ 6 anymore because it has become so unplayable on their console that they just watch streams now to enjoy the game. Now as far as I know, and this is not confirmed, but as far as I know from people who have submitted tickets, 2K is aware of this issue. But if you are having this specific Xbox crashing issue, please submit a ticket to 2K so that they can work on it via the portal that I had showed previously and that you can find in the description below. I know that there are issues in regards to lag and crashes, for example, when it comes to like larger maps on the Switch, but I think the Xbox crashing issue takes precedent right now when it comes to consoles since literally people can't play the f***ing game. For PC players, the main crash issue is honestly a very simple workaround for you. Disable the 2K launcher. Now, that's not the only crash issue. I know a lot of it comes down to either running DX11 instead of DX12 or vice versa. But this one probably takes about 90% of the crash issues overall. There is a link in the description below to a Reddit thread that shows you how to bypass the launcher and just launch the game from Steam. For me, that fixed almost all of my crash issues. The only ones that I get now are just mod incompatibility. Another thing that really needs to be talked about too are the multiplayer desyncs. Now, this is just any time you're in a multiplayer stream or video, you hear about this all the time. I've talked with under Civ, who is a competitive Civ 6 player, in their stream about this multiple times, and the fact that in this day and age, six years later, desyncs that are still an issue and have never been fixed is honestly kind of unacceptable. If you're playing multiplayer, whether it be console or PC, and you desync, the chances of reconnecting and playing the game as if nothing ever happened is probably just not going to happen. The greatest example of this, honestly, is during the Civ Give, which is a charity event that the Civ Show puts on that I and I have played in, where even with the help of mods like Multiplayer Helper, we were unable to finish our game because the game would desync every turn and it would take us around 20 to 30 minutes to even connect to that game. How is it that with a game where the average person that plays Civilization VI is the person that goes, hey, let's play five hours of Civ with our friends because we got it for free on Epic Games. That Civ still doesn't have either dedicated servers or even just small workarounds for the god-awful multiplayer experience. Every person that I know that doesn't either watch Deity Let's Plays or play slash watch competitive Civ only plays Civilization VI when they play with their friends, which is honestly a massive amount of the 8 million people that own Civ VI. It kind of seems like I'm being a little harsh on Firaxis here, and honestly, I kind of am. 90% of the time, I am overwhelmingly positive with this company and this game. As I've stated before, I have a good relationship with them. They are great people. I am friends with the devs. I love their franchise. But when it comes to an issue like this, I believe they deserve some criticism because for years, the multiplayer community has cried for a solution and honestly, they've only gotten silence. Even just a little guidance or maybe a small sentence stating, yeah, we're gonna fix it or no, it's not our top priority, so you'll have to deal with it. It's better than nothing. Now, you may be sitting here going, Bose, why are you pointing out all of these issues? Are you trying to get people to not play Civ 6? Honestly, quite the opposite. I love this game so much that I want new people that are going to play it to understand that when they run into an issue, they're not the only ones and that there are mostly things that you can do about it. Additionally, I don't have a massive platform, but I still have one. And someone stated that I have the power to show some awareness to this issue, so here I am. I'm doing what I can. Overall, Civilization VI is a great game that I play nearly every day without a lot of issues. So I will continue to recommend this game if anyone asks me, should I get this game? It's on sale. Should I buy the anthology? Because it is a great game, especially when it works. If you've been plagued by bugs or just want to talk about them, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. Once again, please, if you are experiencing these, submit a ticket to 2K support. You can find the link in the description below. It helps out way more than you think. Now, if you haven't noticed, I've been enjoying making video essays almost more than gameplay, but 
don't worry, gameplay videos aren't going away anytime soon. If you are enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. We get to see the big number go burr. I'll continue to make video essays like these, and hopefully with some feedback and criticism, I can make them better for you guys in the future. With that, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your support is incredible, and it's just, I don't know, it's rad that people are just throwing an extra buck or two to my way for these videos. You can find me streaming on twitch.tv slash every Tuesday through Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific time, and Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific time if you wanted to watch me play Civilization VI on stream. All in all, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye.